motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings and peace, family, here with another episode with thequeendome.com. Today we're going to um, dive in and talk about pineal activation or your third eye activation. I figured that this would be um, a great segue from the Kundalini Awaking series that we had because really... Um, the two chakra centers work together. Now, before I dive in and we get real deep, let's go ahead and get into the present moment. So let's uh, take a couple of deep breaths and we're gonna honor the present space that we're in and we're gonna honor the breath. So let's go. All right, very good, very good. So I hope your week is progressing um, fantastically. I hope that um, your day is going awesome. And uh, I hope that uh, you are enjoying every single moment that you get to breathe on this plane. That's coming from a space of gratitude. You know, being able to look at things from that perspective. Because, you know, you can always find a reason to have a bad attitude or a reason to not be as joyful, not be as happy as you could be and should be. Just as easy as you can find reasons for the low vibrations, you can find reasons for the high vibration. The thing is, it's a choice that we make each and every day. We choose and we decide the vibration that we want to entertain. We absolutely do. So never let an experience or anything outside of you get you into the thinking that you have no choice for the way that you're feeling. You absolutely do. So if that's the case, then why would you go for a low vibration versus a high vibration? That is the question. But anyway, let's talk about um, pineal activation, third eye activation. Again, I wanted to uh, do this series right behind the Kundalini because the Kundalini activation or awakening, which sits at that, that root chakra, right, which is um, the first chakra down there. There's so many different allegories and so many different stories about uh, from the pineal gland to the root chakra, those energies meeting. You got the Shiva and Shakti story. You've got the uh, Isis, Osiris story from ancient Kemet. Um, So many uh, different stories. And all those allegories are talking about these energy centers coming together and merging this dynamic energy through your heart chakra so you can elevate your consciousness and elevate uh, your being. So what, what is the pineal gland? Well, like I said, you know, it is the sixth chakra. It's commonly known as the third eye chakra. And when we went through and talked about the third eye chakra, we talked about how the endocrine gland that's associated with the third eye chakra is the pineal gland. And that pineal gland 
in that area of the brain. The pineal gland is like a little pea. Um, and it sits right in the middle of the two hemispheres of your brain. So it sits right in the middle. It gives you um, intuitiveness as well as logic, uh, psychic abilities, imagination, and clairvoyance. Now, obviously, this is when your pineal is activated, right? Because over, over years, our pineal gland, as we grow into adults, it becomes calcified depending on our diet and products that we're utilizing. Also, you know, your pineal gland, it acts as really an internal clock because it, it regulates uh, the body's circadian rhythm. And the circadian rhythm is directly correlated to the rhythm of the cosmos, right? So if you look at, just Google, uh, put, type into Google circadian rhythm. And if you align yourself with this rhythmic clock, you're going to always be in harmony. You're going to always be in balance. Like for me, when I'm, when I'm eating, I typically will eat in the first quarter of the circadian rhythm, right? So that's usually like between, um, before, before, before three o'clock. Because that's when your your body, like I said, if you Google this, you can see the um, the map of it and the explanations and all of that. But that first quarter is where your body is at its highest potential as far as burning fat um, and really at a at a at a high uh, frequency, right? So you know if you're wanting to maintain your weight or you know not necessarily. Um, just be eating real late and going to bed on that type of stuff. You know, eating in that first quarter is ideal for me. So that's just a little bit about the circadian rhythm. Um, another thing with the pineal gland. The pineal gland has a lot of different functions. Scientifically, as well as on the mystical side. Okay? So your pineal gland, it actually creates uh, three different chemicals neurochemicals in our body. So it, um, it creates serotonin in the daytime, right? That's the feel good, you know, hormone or chemical. And then it creates melatonin at night. That is the chemical that allows us to, um, to sleep properly, to have lucid dreams at some point. Again, if the pineal gland is activated and open, um, and all of those good things that gives us a good night's nice rest. And then it also produces DMT. Now DMT is that neurochemical, some call it, you know, the God frequency where um, you're able to interact on different planes or in different worlds. And what I mean by that is DMT is typically, there's a rush of DMT in the body at birth and there's a rush of DMT in the body at death. So a lot of folks that have had near-death experiences when they come back and they talk about these different experiences they were able to view that and have that awareness because of the rush of DMT. Okay and all of this um, is because of that little P, that little pineal gland that sits uh, between our eyebrow, eyebrows and between the uh, hemisphere, uh, hemispheres of our brain, okay? Um, another thing too is um, in the uh, Hindu and, and Buddhist um, traditions, they call that chakra the Ajna chakra, A-J-N-A, the Ajna chakra. And you'll see uh, some Buddhists and some Hindu people, they will have a, a dot, you know, right there between their eyebrows. And that dot is to, to cultivate that energy and to keep them mindful of the importance of this, this gland, this pineal gland, this third eye, right? 
Um, so those are really just some, some backgrounds on, you know, what the pineal gland is. Some other uh, things we'll get into. I'm going to break this up into a couple of different parts. So maybe we'll have three or four different parts on this because I'm going to share with you uh, some ways to open your pineal gland, some different uh, things that you can do, things that you don't need to do, right? Um, and then some of the mysticism around it. And I'll share one here just before we close out this episode because I don't want this to go too long. Um, one of the things, one of the main things that inhibits your pineal gland from being activated is fluoride. So you've got fluoride in your water. You've got, you know, fluoride in your toothpaste and, and could be in other things as well. So what you may want to consider is getting rid of those things like heavy metals and fluoride it prevents your pineal gland from opening, prevents your pineal gland from being activated. So look at, you know, your routine and see how much fluoride and heavy metals are going into your body and then make those adjustments um, if this is something that you want to do. <clears throat> Naturally, if you're listening to my podcast, then I'm quite sure. <laughs> I'm quite sure we're on the same frequency. So... You know, get rid of the fluoride. There's plenty of products that are fluoride free now. Um, and get rid of the heavy metals out of your body as well. And also, uh, science says that there are some studies out there that suggest that uh, vitamin A can, can, can help you with melanin production. Okay? So I know some people that they have um, a difficult time sleeping at night. And usually that's because of their diet, <laughs> but uh, vitamin A helps uh, with melanin. Another thing, too, is that when you do sleep at night, you know, to increase the melatonin levels that's happening for you while you sleep, you want to sleep in a really, 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 really dark, dark, dark room. Um, some people I know, they uh, buy the, um, the eye covers so that it's really, really dark. The darker it is, the more melatonin that you produce, okay? But now, if you're, if you're at a point right now where your pineal is calcified, you know it's calcified because if you don't have, you know, intuition, clairvoyance, and um, just these various connections that I mentioned earlier, that's a good indication that it's calcified, okay? So again, Get rid of the fluoride, get rid of the heavy metals, sleep in a very, very, very dark room. And then the last thing that I'm gonna, gonna say is this. Since um, the pandemic has had, um, well, I know when it first started, people don't do it as much now. But when I would go into different stores, you know, they would, the, the temperature gun um, that takes your temperature, you know, they can put it, they can point it to the side of your neck, they can point it into the bend of your arm and take your temperature. But some people were pointing it right between your eyebrows. And I would refuse. And I've had some situations where um, the employee, because they weren't educated, I had to educate them and tell them, you're pointing a laser at my pineal gland. <laughs> I'm not going to allow you to do that. So you have to be mindful of these things. Um, and you have to be aware because these people, they're, I mean, they're not educated on, you know, pineal activation or whatever. They're just, you know, doing their job. But when I let them know, you know, hey, you can take my temperature on my neck. You can take my nymph. Uh, temperature in the in the bend uh, of my arm. You don't have to point it, you know, at my forehead because you're you're damaging me by doing that. So um, that's just a little tip um, for you as well. I don't know what area you may be in. I don't even know if they're still doing it or whatever. But just be mindful of that. You don't want any lasers pointed towards your pineal gland area. Okay. 
So um, tomorrow we're going to get into and talk about some do's and don'ts and we'll do a part number two. Like I said, I'll probably break this up in about four parts. Um, but, you know, just remember some of the tips that I gave you here in this particular episode. Tomorrow we'll get into, like I said, more of uh, practicality and things like that as far as dealing with your pineal gland. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I look forward to delivering the rest of it to you. Again, your pineal and your uh, root chakra, your sixth chakra, your first chakra, those two energy centers, you want them to merge. That's the whole idea. And that's why I decided to do this particular uh, series of episodes right behind the Kundalini awakening. So with that being said, have a great day and peace and unconditional love to you. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.